Can you start a fire with just a piece of steel and a hammer? Let me show you an old blacksmith's trick for fire starting. So let's take a little walk around the shop and we'll see what I have laying around that a uh, traditional blacksmith may have had access to in order to start a fire. So let's fill up our scrap of paper and we'll take that over to the forge with us and we'll of course take our scratch lumber. And now we have this. So this is char cloth. This is what we typically use to start fires with a flint and steel. Now I'm going to take a piece of this just because I think it's going to increase my chances a little bit. There, now our kindling is split down a little bit more. I think we have pretty much everything we need to give this a try. First we'll try it with my regular smithing hammer. This one's about three and a half pounds. You can see that the glowing red hot piece of iron ignited that char cloth. Now we'll go ahead and give it a little breath. I think it's safe to say that that's a success. Here's the piece of metal that we started with. And there's our fire. Now you can see how brittle that metal became. It started to crack. When we were forging it cold to begin with, we caused all sorts of little stress fractures through that bar. Now, in order to actually do this technique, you need pretty good hammer control. You need to be able to make the hammer do what you want it to do. It needs to strike in the right spot consistently. You have to have that rhythm in order to make it work correctly. So practically speaking, practicing this can actually make you a better blacksmith. If I'm working on a piece of iron or steel and it's starting to cool down as I'm working it, you can actually get it to heat back up. And I'll show you that here in a second. But this also leaves me with a question. And the question is, will this work with other metals? What about this chunk of stainless steel? What I was using before is just low carbon, what we call mild steel. It's 1018 cold rolled, and I normalized it so it had as little stress in it as possible before we started. And I found a piece of copper bar that's about the same size. Will it work with copper? The curiosity in me just has to know. So we're gonna try it with stainless, we're gonna try it with copper, but right now let me show you the practical application side of it. Okay, so check this out. This is a glowing orange piece of steel. And I'm just gonna let that cool down. Right now, this would be the opportune time to start working it down. But I'm gonna wait. There, you can see how much it's heated back up on the tip there. I got it to a nice bright orange again as I was hammering it. It's almost cooled back down. But when you're drawing out these tapers and points, if you can keep that metal hot and reheat it with that good rhythm, this will just make you more and more efficient so you don't waste the heat. Next up, we'll try to go from cold to critical temperatures with this piece of stainless. This is slightly larger diameter bar than I was using before. So I'm gonna switch up to my 10 pound hammer just to give it a little bit more oomph.
look how hot I got it with the stainless. It's no problem getting this tri-cloth lit up with that. I was at a nice orange. Check out the tip of the stainless. It's not even cracked. It might be a little bit cracked back here, but compared to the mild steel, it's night and day difference. And now for the one I'm the most curious about, the copper. You can see the metal got discolored, so I know we were close, but I just ran out of metal to forge. I think we really need to try it with the bigger hammer before we can make any conclusions. I'm a little out of breath, but I think we can say that we gave it a fair try. Again, it's discolored and we really drew it out. I don't think I saw any glowing color on it. So obviously this technique works with ferrous metals, so iron, steel, even stainless steel. It seemed to work a little better with stainless steel. And I don't know what grade of stainless that was, but I'm guessing it's because of the other metals that are mixed in to make it stainless. I think those metals work a little bit better at cold temperatures without cracking and that's why we had a better result. Why didn't the copper work? It's been about a minute and a half since we did our test and I can feel the heat transferred all the way back to here. It's quite warm. I wouldn't want to hold on to it for very long back here. Now copper is a really, really good conductive metal. That's why we use it for carrying electricity and wiring. It just conducts things very well. So I think what's happening is we're getting this end really hot, obviously, because it's transferring back. But because this is such a good conductor, it's dispersing the heat through a good chunk of this bar. And I think it's also got something to do with the anvil face. The anvil is acting as kind of a heat sink and taking some of that energy away from it. So we're not getting it quite up to glowing. So theoretically, I believe it is possible to get this to work, but you would probably need a warmer anvil surface to work on in order to get it to work. Thank you to all of you who joined me on this fire starting adventure. We had good success today. I'm really happy with the results that we got. If you'd like to keep up with us further, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube page. Check us out on TikTok, on Instagram, and on Facebook. We're fairly active there. And if you'd like to support us and help us make better and better content, uh, check out our Etsy shop and keep up with us at DeWallsForge.com. We sell a lot of our wares through there. Again, we genuinely thank all of you who have joined us on this adventure. We'll see you in the shop for the next project.